What's going on YouTube? This is Jabber Tech, and today I'm going to give you my full review of the Google Pixel 4 XL. I've had this phone since launch and I've been using it well enough to know what's good about it, what's bad about it, some things I like, some things I don't like. Now if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in picking this phone up. I actually have the white one, but there is an orange one and there's a black one available as well. But whichever color you choose, everything's going to be about the same. And I'm here to help you out, I'm here to let you know if it's quote unquote worth it. This is the Pixel 4 XL. You get a nice 6.3 inch AMOLED panel, the Snapdragon 855 processor. Finally, we get about six gigabytes of RAM in here, which is beefed up from last year's four. But is it still enough with 64 or 128 of storage options with no expandability? I would argue that this is a good phone, but it's not a great phone for 2019. Google is well behind the times, and I don't know why they're doing that. Well, I actually do know why. They probably don't want to step on any of their partner's toes, and they don't want to come out with something super fancy. Or maybe there's some other reasons that this is still a developer's phone, but they're charging us premium pricing. And that brings me to the pricing of this 128 model after tax you're looking at well over a thousand dollars so if you're watching this video right now guys there are some incentives you're probably getting it a lot less than I paid for that thousand dollars now if you get this for about 800 bucks for the 128 edition I'd say that's well worth it but at 1100 bucks almost after tax this is definitely a not an 1100 dollar phone and that brings me to the first gripe I have with this is it's not a premium spec phone for the price when you consider other manufacturers and other budget brands such as OnePlus and Huawei they give you a lot better options but with the Google phones at least you know you're always getting an update at least you know that if Android 11 drops tomorrow you'll be one of the first to impress your friends with it and that's definitely a huge plus is software updates and the pure stock experience Google just gives you a no frills and at a thousand dollars some would argue you should get some frills for that price point but we don't it's a pure Google experience you like it or you don't and if you don't you just keep it moving but the one thing that I always picked up pixel phones for starting with the pixel 3 XL is the camera. The camera on these phones is absolutely perfect. Now the camera on this phone is the main reason why anybody picks one of these up, but Google better step up their game because competitors are hot on their heels. Competitors like the iPhone and Samsung phones are getting really, really good. And the one thing that I don't like about the camera is there isn't a wide angle lens. Everybody basically in this price point gives you three cameras and Google for some reason decided to only give us two. So you get a regular and then you get a telephoto, but I'm not really a huge fan of telephoto. I would have much rather a wide angle lens and I would have much rather three cameras. It doesn't really cost Google more than a few dollars to throw on another camera, but they're doing the iPhone thing and they're gonna keep that till the next iteration. I'm pretty sure of that. But that being said, I'm gonna show you some photo samples and the photos that I've taken from this phone have been absolutely gorgeous, flawless, without any effort whatsoever. If you just want a great point and shoot, automatic everything type of camera, this is the camera that you should get. And that's another gripe that I have with this. There is not a pro mode. Everybody has a pro mode now and Google just is not giving us a pro mode. That's not a huge deal breaker for myself personally, just because I am an auto type of shooter every day or day. I did want to ramp up the ISO the other day when I saw a waterfall just to make a cool just to make a cool picture but I wasn't able to do that just because well we don't have a pro mode in here but it is what it is my photos still came out absolutely perfect my photos still impressed everybody that I was around this is what the camera app looks like so you get some options down here you do have night sight you have portrait you have camera you have video which sadly does not do 60 frame a second at 4k Again, a lot of competitors in this price point are giving us 4K at 60 frame. We only get 30 frame here, and it is what it is. I don't know what to say about that, but it's one of those things. Again, you either like it or you don't. And more, we have panorama, photosphere, slow motion, time lapse, playground, if you want to mess around with those stickers and whatnot. And then Google Lens is here as well. But for me, I usually leave it on camera mode, regular mode, and I shoot. But the cool thing is you can adjust the exposure. You have a dual slider here for whites and then for shadows. So you really can, if you want to, have a semi-pro mode and just maybe tweak your photos a tiny little bit if you wanted to. Again though, the camera is why we pick up these phones and the camera is something that does not disappoint. It will not disappoint you, I guarantee it. One thing I don't like about it, now we have a outdated design. Last year's Pixel 3 gave us that forehead, gave us that Frankenstein look, but now we're actually going back in time and we have this huge forehead 
at least the chin is a little bit smaller, but it's not a design that's going to wow anybody. Again, at the $1,100 price point, they should have improved their design. But the reason behind it, of course, is we get some pretty cool tech in here. Let's talk about the face unlock on this. Now, it does a pretty good job unless you're in direct sunlight. If you're in direct sunlight, this is not going to recognize your face and it's going to keep saying try again, try again or enter in your pin. So if you're somewhere that's sunny all the time and the sun is shining on your face, facial unlock will not work. And for me, I don't know, that kind of bummed me out a little bit, but if you are in darkness and you are in other conditions where the sun is behind you or not directly on you, this will work without any problems about 99% of the time. One thing I don't like though is that all of your banking institution apps, your financial apps and other apps that have really become more accustomed to using the biometrics will not work on this again. They need to update their apps to work with facial unlock, which they haven't done as of yet. Will that get to us? I'm sure it will get to us and probably by the time you're watching this video, those financial institutions would have updated their apps. But for the time being, it's just a little bit of a pain. I guess being an early adopter is something you have to live with if you choose to do so. Other than the front design, it's a really nice feel in hand. You have these rails on the side, these metal rails that are matte black, and they just feel super, super nice in hand. And the back here, that's also kind of a matte finish, non-glossy, so you don't see any fingerprints whatsoever. And you really don't think that this is glass. It just kind of psychs you out and you kind of think, I don't even know what material this feels like, but it definitely does not feel like glass. It's a well-built phone and I like the accent color for the power button. And I actually like the overall look of it. At first, I didn't really like it all that much. Kind of looked like a surprise robot over here, but it grew on me and I do like the design. You have wireless charging, but you also have USB-C fast charging on the back at 18 watts. The speakers are no longer front firing. They should have been front firing like they've always been on Pixel phones and Nexus phones, but they are on the bottom. The speakers actually sound super, super clean. A different type of Android TV box than what I've reviewed in the past. The ones that I've reviewed in the past are more for the advanced user, but they also are lacking some key things that a lot of us like, including Google Cast support. Well, Me Cool is a Google certified Android box, which means you get the Google Assistant built in. It's just an over. And what's really awesome about the Pixel 4, you get some new tricks here. Of course, you get some different ways to access the Google Assistant. You can just squeeze your phone and it'll bring up the Google Assistant. You can also swipe up from the corner and it'll bring up the Google Assistant as well. But what I like about this, you now get live captioning and this can work on device. So if you don't want to interrupt everyone around you, Roll just turn it on. Box, especially because this rare edition has 128 gig. Maybe you want to turn down the volume. You're somewhere where you don't really have the opportunity to listen to something. All you have to do here is turn on this live caption feature and it'll work just about in every app, at least the apps that I've tried. And live caption turns on and you can see it down there. It's in real time and does a super awesome job at doing it. Let's talk about battery life as that's what people are really interested in. This is, this is your livelihood a lot of times. Your phone is your everything. Your phone is your world. So you want it to last. And at least for me, this lasts an entire day without any issues. You can see that a full charge, Google is telling me, lasts about a day and 11 hours. My screen on time today has just been two hours and 32, but I usually get about three to four with this. Again, screen on time depends on a lot of variables, and I don't think that should be a measurement, but I know a lot of you like to know at the screen on time, so I usually get about three to four on a good day. Now, what I definitely like about Google, they do some good adaptive battery magic, and that's why I don't even display my battery percentage on the top anymore, just because when I have adaptive battery turned on, I know I'm going to make it through the entire day. I know that it's not going to be an issue at all. And if I don't make it, I have my battery saver to turn on at 15%. And that's just something that, again, I don't worry about because Google and their battery magic always makes it through the entire day. It kind of turns off location services when you don't need it. It turns your screen grayscale to save on battery life as well. And it just will start turning off features just to make sure that your battery lasts until you can find the charger. So at least in my experience, the battery life has been decent. It hasn't been great. No, a lot of manufacturers, a lot of their competitors can get you to two days like the Note 10 Plus. But we're talking about the Pixel 4 XL and Google has never been a master of battery. But hopefully they're getting there and they do some software tricks, some software gimmicks that help you make it through the entire day. So if battery is your number one concern, you might want to look elsewhere. But for most of us, if you're used to charging devices when you go to sleep, I think you'll be just fine with the Google Pixel 4 XL. One thing that annoys me with the software and a lot of manufacturers like LG, Samsung, Huawei, etc. have been doing this for quite some time 
And that's the ability to run two accounts from the same app. So you can have two WhatsApp accounts, you can have two Facebook Messenger accounts, you can have two of a lot of other accounts that support it on the same phone. And that's something that I personally miss. I have multiple phone numbers and I like to just travel with one phone when I can. And I would just put my WhatsApp account on one phone with the two numbers and I'd always be able to reply to people. But now that's not an option with my Google Pixel 4 XL. So Google, if you're listening, please give us the ability to run two accounts from the same app. That would be greatly appreciated. For those of you that know what I'm talking about, let me know if you enjoy that feature, if you use it the most. But that's something that I find lacking in the software. And that's really the only thing that I find lacking in the software. So Google finally has introduced dark theme into their phones and into most of their apps from Google. If you like the dark theme, you can enable it. If you don't like it, you can turn it off and it's just as simple as flipping on a switch. For me, I kind of like the dark mode, so I leave it on personally. Other things that I like about this phone is that you do get a really accurate screen and you can have a different color tone if you want to. So if you want to play around with it and see what looks the most to you, you can go ahead and change it. I usually leave it on adaptive and let it do its thing. I think this is the best screen Google's ever put on a phone. It's a really gorgeous panel. It does well in direct sunlight. Although it doesn't get super, super bright, again, like other competitors, but I've never had an issue personally in direct sunlight using this phone, and I've never had an issue in complete darkness where it didn't get super dim, and I just blinded myself, so it gets dim enough for me, and it really gets bright enough for me in all of my situations that I've encountered, but the problem is it's a 90 hertz refresh rate, but unless your brightness is set to above 75%, it's gonna drop back down to 60. For me, again, I personally don't know the difference. I know a lot of people out there notice the difference difference and they claim that it really annoys them and they can see the switching between 90 and 60. For those people out there, good for you, but I think for most of us, we're really not going to notice the difference between 90 and 60. I just think that's something that people like to say they can see, but they really can't. Let me know down in the comments below if I'm doing something wrong, but for me, I don't even know when it switches. I can't even tell personally. For, in my opinion, this is really still a great screen. I'm used to 60 hertz panels. 90 hertz is a bonus when it works. Don't even worry about it. If you're the regular person, if you're an average person, you're not going to notice the difference between it. The Soli chip in here was a huge tease. I thought Soli would do so much more with this radar and maybe it will in the future, but as of right now, it's definitely not something that I use on a daily basis. And sometimes when I have music playing and I just swipe my hand over to maybe pick something up from the desk, it'll automatically go back or fast forward to the next track. So sometimes it is a little bit of an annoyance, but as you can tell, it actually works pretty, pretty good. All you have to do is swipe over your hand, and I'd say it works about 98% of the time. Where this became more useful for me is when I was driving, when I had music playing and I had this mounted on my dashboard. All I had to do was swipe over and kind of go to the next song, and it was good to go. You basically have to do a whole hand movement in order for it to work. If you just do something like this with two fingers, it might work, it might not. But for the most part, you do have to do like a whole hand figure. But again, if this is on my desk and I kind of reach over, you see it kind of thinks I'm trying to change the track and it will sometimes change it. That's just one thing to note about Soli. And it is not available in every single app, but it does work when your lock screen is on. So if you're listening to music, you can kind of just swipe on over. If Soli is available, you'll see that little glow on the top there, just letting you know that it's available. And when you swipe, you get a pretty cool animation that'll show it going either which way. So again, for me, Soli was not something that really wowed me. I thought it would be a lot better than it is. Soli will also quiet your alarms. If you have an alarm going off and you just reach for the phone, it'll sort of turn it off and it'll also activate your screen if you just wanna check if you have any notifications. So the phone is off right now, but if I go ahead and reach for it, it's gonna activate the screen just to show me if I have any notifications. And this is a great way again to save battery life because you don't need that always on display. Just go ahead and kind of reach over for it and it will activate your screen. Let's talk about software. Now this phone uses gestures. So you kind of do like a half swipe up and you get to all your open applications. But why do we have to scroll all the way to the right to hit that clear all button? I think Google should have a clear all right in the beginning. This way it'll be a lot easier to just kind of, well, clear all of your applications. To swipe back, you kind of just swipe on the screen as well bring up the corners and that'll swipe back for you. No issues with swiping back, although sometimes you do get some false positives here. 
and it thinks you want to swipe back when you don't. But the gestures are around. The gestures I've personally never had any issues with, and I find myself on other devices just kind of swiping from the side to go back. So once you get used to them, it's just a part of life. And again, I think Google did a good job with the gestures in my opinion. The software is super, super smooth. No lag, no issues playing games, no issues with a lot of applications open. And then of course, the best thing about the Google Pixel phones is you always have an update available for you. There's always something coming out. There's always a security patch or they're always just constantly improving these updates. So if you really want to stay on top of the Android scene and you don't want to wait a year for say Samsung or LG to release the next iteration, this is the phone to get. This is a pure Google experience and this is something that really is a nice experience. Google has done some few tweaks and they've really tried to make this a more pleasurable experience. So for example, we now have themes here. So if we go into the wallpaper settings, they call it styles and you can change the look of your icons here and change a few colors up. Now it's not as extensive as other manufacturers like OnePlus, but you can go in and change the shape if you wanted to and kind of, you know, change it up, have some fun with it and then make this kind of your own. Hopefully they will give us some more colors and whatnot in the future, but it is nice to be able to go in, create your font, and then you can go in and change your icon if you have a different type of icon that you like. And then there's some different accent colors as well. Let's go back. You can have a little squircle design, a square, or this, I don't know what that is, a teardrop design. Let's leave that one like this. And we're going to call this one the YouTube example. YouTube example. Click apply. And then it's going to apply all the changes to all of your all of your apps here, whether they support it or not. It is new in Android. They have to support all of these designs. And then here's your new color layout as well. So Google's trying to make this fun, trying to catch up with a few other manufacturers. So my thoughts on the Pixel 4 XL, am I happy that I bought it? I'm really happy I bought the Pixel 4 XL. I think I overpaid for it, but getting that $100 back for the pre-order kind of softened the blow a little bit. If you're watching this, and they're still trying to get $1,000 for this 128. Just say no to that. Check my swap a listing where you can actually save a lot of money. I've seen the 128 version go for 800 bucks, and I think that's where this should have been priced in the beginning. At 800 bucks for a 128, I think Google would have sold a lot more of these devices, but at 1100 bucks after tax or even 1000 pre-tax, I think it's just a little bit too expensive, but again, they are kind of making this phone for the nerd out there. So if you're like me and you're a nerd and software updates make you happy, you know Pixel phones are the way to go. Until manufacturers like OnePlus step up their game and give us an awesome camera, that's really why you pick up the Google Pixel line, is to get that awesome Google experience, that awesome picture quality that really cannot be beat. So until manufacturers like OnePlus step up their game with camera, give us an actual IP rating like this one has, and give us wireless charging, the Pixel 4 is your best option. If you want a pure stock experience with a camera that really is the best camera on the market, other manufacturers are catching up, but they aren't caught up just yet. So for now, the Pixel 4 XL should be on your list if you're more of a photo taker. For videos, the video quality is so-so, but I personally don't take a ton of videos. I mostly take stills. So if you're like me and you take a lot of stills, this is the way to go. If you have any questions or comments about the Pixel 4 XL, let me know down in the comments below and I'll be sure to try and answer all of them. I always appreciate you guys watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.